Alright guys, thanks for watching that first video. We're going to get started with the second video here. So, I'm going to show you the rosters I'm going to use. Uh, usually I go to this guy, uh, the Ridden something, I don't know. I usually use his rosters, his are always really good. He operates with like team operations, sports or something like that. And it's like a team collab effort. So their, their rosters are always really good. So today's 14th, he updated this on the 8th, or created it on the 8th. So close enough, I'm going to download it. And I'm gonna use it. So uh, let's just save this puppy here. As you can tell, I have a whole bunch of rosters. So I play this nonstop all the time until like five in the morning. So we're gonna go to our franchise mode here. We're gonna do new. We're gonna go to saved rosters and we're gonna get our rosters that we just saved. So we have a bunch of teams here. Like I said, usually my go to team is the Cubs. I play with them a bunch. But so I wanted to do something interesting and something challenging. So I tried to pick the most intriguing team that I could think of. A team in a solid division that, you know, is kind of in the middle of things. Because it is August right now. I'm kind of a little bit behind the eight ball. Like I said, I've wanted to do this for a while. But um, really haven't had the motivation to, to do it. And I've really done almost every team. So I just kind of just went with something that I thought would be fun. So I just took a vacation to Seattle. Uh, I went to a Mariners game that they won actually is the game where Trout had that catch and they have a pretty good team right now they're kind of in the middle of things in a wild card hunt so I'm gonna go ahead and play with uh, the Mariners here as you can see they have 151 million dollar budget they have reached postseason as a yearly goal win division series as contract goal for the GMs and they rank 13th with speed pretty low defense pretty low and contact power and pitching kinda right in the middle of things so let's get started here with the Mariners GM contracts on as always. Don't be one of those guys that turns them off. Fantasy draft off. Legend free agents off. C CPU roster control is going to be on. Off, actually. Uh, CPU trading is on. Uh, let me just read this for a second. Make sure I'm kind of tired. I just got back today. So let's see here. When off CPU control teams will only make trades initiated by you. When on CPU trading will enable. Yep. We're going to leave that on. Ignore budgets off. Force trades off. Designated hitter auto. Here we go. Auto saving here. Let's get into this. I have a lot to talk about in this first video. So let's look at our roster here. Robin, Robinson Cano, best player on the team. Followed by King Felix, Nelson Cruz, Kyle Seeger. Young up and coming guy. Just got a big contract a couple years ago. $12.2 million for seven years. Yakuma. E. Iwakuma. Here we go. Tyson Walker. Pretty young guy. I want to keep this guy. And he's 23, already 84. So that's just basic things. Martin, too. Let's just kind of go over some guys here. We got King Felix down to LeBlanc. I think this is going to be our starting rotation here to get the season underway with Don Roach vying for a spot. Um, in the bullpen, Nick Vincent Williamson. See Sheck, he just went down with the injury actually a couple days ago. He got labrum and hip tort, has to have surgery on it. Frobush, Ryan Cook, uh, he was just on Boston last year. I actually saw him, he played in there, he just got shelled. Uh, June Storm, Indiana boy. Uh, Seattle, Blake Partners, Stribber. Edwin Diaz, uh, this guy pitched against Cubs, my team. I watched him, real hard thrower, struck a bunch of guys out. Upper 90s, pretty solid. Be a good closer in the years coming. Catcher, we have Zanino and Nayanetta. Clevenger, too. He played with the Cubs. Good contact hitter. We're going to go ahead and add him to the 40 man. I'll get into what I do for spring training to show you guys how I operate that. I'm just giving you an overview of the roster right now. So, Ionetta, good power guy. Hits well against lefties. And Zanino, or Zanino. Man, I'm going to have a tough time troubling or announcing names today. Um, good power hitter. Hasn't really broken through just quite yet. As you can see, his stats can't hit over 200. Has some good pop in there, though. I mean, 199 with 22 home runs and uh, 438 at bats. So that's pretty solid, actually, for a catcher. Um, really, they just want to focus them on calling the game. So, as you can see, you got a 67 fielding, 78 arm strength. It's a pretty decent catcher, 81 blocking. Uh, Ionetta more of a better hitter than he is a catcher 
compared to Zanino. And Clevenger, kind of decent, just platoon all around catcher. Played for the Cubs actually a couple years ago, or a while ago when they were bad. First base, we got Adam Lenz and Day Ho Lee. Vogelbach just came from the Cubs from Mike Montgomery not too long ago before the deadline. And DJ Peterson. Uh, obviously, we got Cano, Mike Freeman. I saw his MLB debut. He has about three hits, I think, so he had a good debut. So, Cano, no one really else at second base. Third base, Seeger, talked about him already. Patrick Brady, Joe DeCarlo, none of these guys are kind of relevant as of now. Patel Marte, one of the good young shortstops in the game, kind of um, underrated because we got Correa and Russell and a bunch of good shortstops now, but he's kind of an underrated player. I think he's 78 overall. Good contact hitter. Uh, 283 in his first season with 219 plate appearances or bats with two home, two home runs and Sean O'Malley. Uh, Nori Aoki, uh, kind of a veteran. He's only been in the league two years. Came from Japan. Good contact hitter, as you can see, 287 career with the uh, average with the 353 on base, 386 slugging. So not a big slugger. As far as that, that's really it. Baxter. He might be on the uh, big league roster when the season opens up. Center field, we got Martin and Gutierrez. Martin, speedster, great fielder, decent hitter, looking to break through. He was with the Rangers. He had one good year with them. Hit 274, some of them runs, and 533 at-bats. With I mean, look at the stolen bases. I mean, 31 stolen bases and then 36 stolen bases in 2014 and 2013, respectively. So... He's a player just looking to break, uh, break through with the Mariners here. 28 years old. Gutierrez hits well. Decent fielder. More of a right fielder or left fielder than he is a center fielder. So we might move him around. Already 33 years old with a $4 million deal for one year. Uh, Boog Powell. One of the decent prospects. I know that. Leon Laundry. So everyone else is kind of down there. Uh, Nelson Cruz, one of their better players, slugger. I mean, look at that. I mean, 95 contact lefty, 92 power righty, 88 power lefty. He'll probably de start to degress, though. I mean, look at him. He's 35 years old. But, I mean, last year, 302 average, 44 home runs, and 590 plate appearances. Or at-bats, I should say. 93 R RBI. So, we're looking to get that uh, production from him this year, but we'll see how it goes. He might start you know, regressing pretty quick here. With 369 on base with a 334 or career average, so well above average season for him last year. So we'll hope that he can uh, continue that into this year. With Seth Smith, good all-around uh, platoon guy in the outfield, good hitter, hits right as well. I mean, he's always kind of been a pl platoon guy. I don't think he's ever started. Maybe that year in Colorado in 2011 where he hit 284, 15 home runs. So, good all around, you know, Southern every now and then probably provide some good offense. Anyway, so I have a lot to talk about, and I'm going to try and squeeze it into this video. So, if I'm rushing, if I'm talking really fast, I apologize, but I have a lot, a lot, a lot to talk about. So, prospects here that they have in their system, their top 10 according to the MLB.com. We have Kyle Lewis in the outfield, Tyler O'Neill in the outfield, Drew Jackson at shortstop, Nick Needart, the right handed pitcher, Luis Gohara. If I'm mispronouncing these names, I'm sorry. I'm not a Mariners fan, so I apologize. Lefty pitcher, Alex Jackson, outfielder. Dan Vogelbach just come from the Cubs. Good first baseman. Rizzo is blocking him, so they had, the Cubs had to dump him. Uh, DJ Peterson at first base as well. Joe Rizzo at third base. And Andrew Moore, right-handed pitcher. So those are our good prospects that we've got to be looking out for on the up and up. Uh, call them up to the league, hopefully mid mid-season. Maybe earlier if they have a good start to the year and uh, there's a spot that they can come up to. So anyway, I'm going to start talking about how I operate spring training because a lot of these people that I watch, they just blatantly sim through spring training. They don't pay any attention to it, and spring training to me is vital. It's uh, Everyone gets their timing down, pitchers getting the swing of things. So spring training is pretty important, and I don't think a lot of people realize that. But first, well, actually... Um, I'm going to actually, what I do, what I usually do is I fill out my 40 man roster and I get, you know, 40 men 
guy or 40 guys on the roster for spring training so i'm gonna go ahead and do that i'm gonna come right back and i'm gonna show you guys what i did so i'll be right back all right guys just filled out the roster as you can see they have a pretty thin roster actually now that i look at it so i could only really call up 37 guys because everyone else they really just weren't good enough to come up i mean in right field i have a 63 overall up 63 overall up 62 and 61 and 66 overall up you know 69 overall up I forgot to mention Luis Sardinius, a uh, decent player, he's been around, you know, just kind of, again, looking in, or looking to break in with someone, um, I mean, yeah, so, I mean, 66 overall up, 68 overall up, he was actually gonna, you know, 69, 69 up, um, so, yeah, as far as the rotation goes, I always just fill it out so every spot is taken, if you have extra guys, they won't get innings unless you sub them in. So really, I just try and get everyone who's above 70 in both my starting rotation. So you see 69 and down. They're all in AAA and AA. And obviously, there's some 70 guys here. But at the same time, they just there wasn't enough room to call them up because they're not going to get innings. And then as far as, uh, I mean, you know, I have a bunch of guys here that I can sub in and, you know, use you know, in my spring training to get on my bats and everything, see how they do. So, as you can see here, the roster, or the lineup, I mean, I'm going to make some adjustments to it, and then I'm going to tell you guys my strategy and how I make my lineups. So, I'm going to go ahead and switch it up, and then I'm going to let you know how I do it and my strategy and all that stuff. I'll let you guys know. So, I'll be right back again. All right, what's up, guys? Just got back. I just edited these lineups to my liking so really my strategy and what I do is pretty simple and it's really just based off of sabermetrics and there aren't really too many advanced sabermetrics in this game that I can really apply and show you guys as I would like but there are still some so my line or my leadoff guy I like to have a high average and high on base so as you can see, he's got a 353 on base, which is decent. It's not great, but it's still pretty good for a leadoff guy and a 287 average. So that's pretty good for a Yoki there. I mean, he's not a big slugger, but he'll get on base and he'll set the table for some guys. So then I got Martin. I mean, he just he swipes bags real easy. Off season last year, I mean, he hit 219, but still a 255, 305, and 361 slugging. So that's I mean, it's a good guy to have up there to, you know, get on base, swipe some bags, move some people over, you know, bunt the ball. He's a pretty good bunter. Look at that. I mean, 99, 99, 95 durability. So, good bunter. He'll move him over. And obviously, your three hitters, you know, your best overall hitter on the team. I mean, who other to put there than, you know, Robinson Cano. So, best overall hitter. Um, fourth hitter, just absolute slugger. I mean, I mean, I mean again pretty unanimous there you just got to put Cruz there I mean 44 home runs 93 RBIs you know with these guys at the top he'll drive them in you know Seager just kind of you know uh he'll get on base I mean when I mean look 466 slugging and a 332 on base with 328 on base he'll get on base and I'm hoping I put Lynn behind him because he has a high slugging and he'll slug these guys over you know hits a lot of doubles all that stuff to get these guys in so that's why I put him here and him here and just because he'll get on base and he'll slug them around Gutierrez is just kind of a spot filler there I put him in uh, right field because I mean he has an 88 arm strength so typical right fielder strongest arm on the team goes in right field you know decent hitter Zanino I mean power numbers good catcher so he's gonna have the bats against righties and then Catal Marte you know just good fielding shortstop decent hitter contact hitter he'll get on base at the bottom of the lineup so that's why he's at the bottom and as far as the no dhs go i always i it's a superstition of mine i always put i always put the pitcher in the eighth spot i don't know why don't ask me i just think it kind of gives you an advantage to have a leadoff hitter kind of sort of thing in the ninth spot you know to come around and start it up again and again robbie cano three spot same lineup really as far as lefties go, Ionetta bumps in there. I mean, 60 contact and 67 power. I mean, he'll drop some bombs against some lefties and good enough catcher to get some at-bats. Um, Deho Lee, 
comes in against lefties. Slugger against lefties. Again, put put him right behind Seager. And I mean, look, 54 contact, 74 power against lefties. And Lind has a 42 and 43. So pretty easy switch there. I mean, pretty, you know, kind of easy switch, like I said. Um, again, Martin, put him in center field. I mean, great speed, great buncher. Can't really not have him in the lineup. See how he does. Let's see how it goes. It's So, I mean, and then the same thing, really. I bumped him up to the two spot here. I got Gutierrez in the two spot because with 73 contact with a 258, 309 on base. So these guys might switch here depending on, or Martin and Gutierrez, depending on how things go. And then there's my bench, of course. And same thing with the no DH pitcher in the eight spot. So, um... I'm going to go ahead and pause it here again, and I'm going uh, to talk about some more stuff when I get back. So like I said, you, know, you kind of want your high on base guys, and your you know, high on base, high average at the top, and then you're just sluggers right here. I mean, these three guys are going to slug some runs in. They're going to have some high RBI totals, hopefully. And then the bottom, I mean, high average, high on base right there, good fielder. And then these two guys, hopefully they'll get some RBIs, you know, drive him in after he drives them in. So that's kind of my strategy. I, I don't want to get too far into it because I want to talk about it farther down the line when the season actually starts and I can show you numbers and I can show you stats and I can show you how it's working. And if it's not working, I can show you the strategies to use that, you know, will make it better and will create more runs because that's what wins games is runs. You have to score runs in order to win the game. As far as pitching goes, um, like I said, I had a bunch of sabermetrics. I mean, really what you got to pay attention to is the Ks per nine, uh, based on balls per nine. And you can, they have them right there in that little wheel. You know, Paxton, I saw him pitch. He did a good job against the Angels when I saw him pitch. And then uh, watch out. I don't know if they have it in here. Their ground balls versus fly ball rates. I don't think they do, actually. But another thing, they have, I mean, all their Ks, nines, balls per nines, and home runs per nines. This thing, fielding and independent pitching right here. It really accounts for, I mean, the home runs that they give up, and it takes out kind of just like the bad luck, you know, kind of just, you know, bloop singles, all that stuff. So pay attention to that, too. You want that to be low. I mean, he has a 356 career where King Felix has. Let's go over here and see. Um, a 303. So, a round of three is pretty, I mean, that's pretty good for having a three fielding independent pitching. So, yeah, 350. So, I mean, three is about as best it'll get. I mean, if you have an absolute stud, let's go look at Kershaw here. See what his fielding and pitching is, just to give you an example of, like, someone that's really good. I mean, 250. I mean, that's as I mean that's as great as it's gonna get. I mean, obviously Kershaw, best pitcher in the game right there. So, I mean, look, 181 fielding and a pitcher, independent pitching, 166 fielding and a pitcher. So pay attention to that. If it's a, above a four, someone's real stru really struggling. So just pay attention to that as the season goes along. Let's go back to my team here. So, like I said. I mean, they're in a good division. The Angels are having an off year. But, I mean, the Rangers are loaded now. Astros are good. Athletics are always going to, I mean, they're not too great. They're going to be at the bottom. Mariners are right in the middle. So, I'm going to try and get them over the hump this year. And I'm going to try and do as best as I can with them in order to have a successful year and hopefully get them in the playoffs. And, you know, play, see there, reach postseason, win division series. That's what I'm aiming for this year. And I'm going to do everything in my power to do that. All right? So, um... I think I'm running low on time here, so I might cut this video off. I still have more I want to talk about before I get the actual season started, but I'll show you guys in the next video.